Don't you love it when things just fit together? Hi, I'm Nathan, and welcome to Curious. Today, we're going to be talking about how next generation sequencing and digital PCR fit together as the perfect pair for biomarker discovery and validation. So without further ado, let's get curious. Welcome back. As a reminder, here on Curious, we welcome questions. So don't forget to enter them on the right hand of your screen. With me today is Ellen. She's one of our molecular biology experts here at Kyogen. Hi, Ellen. How are you? Hi, Nathan. I'm good, thank you. Glad to be here with you. Great. And today we're going to be talking about the biomarker discovery workflow, correct? Yes, and I'm thrilled to share how NGS and DPCR actually perfectly complement each other in this powerful workflow. Okay, first of all, workflow. As I understand that, that's everything in research. That's from beginning of the research, the sample preparation, all the way to the data analysis. How do NGS and DPCR uh, fit in on this workflow? So they're actually the backbone of that streamline workflow. So if you take the entire workflow, you start with a sample collection, and that can be liquid biopsy. Then you go into stabilization, that sample extraction of the nucleic acid you need. It can be DNA, RNA. And then you go into NGS library prep, data analysis, validation of some of the targets using DPCR, and then final data integration. So do you have any examples of how these two fit in in a workflow in the real world? Yes, I do. I actually brought a, a video uh, showing how a laboratory called Hummingbird Diagnostics uh, implemented an NGS and DPCR workflow to identify small RNAs from liquid biopsy in order to uh, characterize and detect um, lung cancer. Okay, great. So why don't we take a look? We focus on whole blood because um, it's the most common method or most common source for a liquid biopsy. The small RNAs can be used to detect, for example, a disease or a condition in human being by just measuring the expression of those small RNAs in a biological specimen. While being a great pre-analytical tool, the PEXGEN samples all the RNA material that you have in the whole blood. So your signal from a tumor may be completely lost in the plethora of other RNAs which comes from, uh, for example, uh, red blood cells. And we have faced this problem because uh, there is only three microRNAs with such a high expression that they can completely um, overshadow the signal that would be coming from a tumor. So we teamed up with NGS team from Acryogen and we co-developed together a fast select reagent customized to our purposes. This fast select is essentially a set of oligonucleotides that block um, target molecules, in our case this very abundant free microRNAs. So the fast select and the later additions to these reagents has helped us to uncover molecules which were stemming from the tumor at already very early stage. And cryoacuity was the game changer for us because it allowed us the sensitivity that we were searching for for our diagnostic settings to detect our top RNA biomarkers also in the samples in which NGS couldn't detect a signal before. Cryoacuity essentially gave us this 1,000-fold sensitivity boost that we needed. So the pipeline we have developed, uh, which we use for, in our case, lung cancer detection, can be also applied to any other cancer, provided that the cancer is at a stage that it already sheds some material to the bloodstream. So Hummingbird used NGS to discover promising biomarkers and then the sensitivity of DPCR to validate these biomarkers. So, Ellen, what makes NGS so effective for the discovery? So, NGS is all about breadth. Basically, you can take a holomix approach that is actually target agnostic, and you can use that to screen through thousands of different targets to identify the ones that are going to be the most uh, relevant. And um, after that, you can use DPCR to uh, validate some of these targets. 
So in other words, they weren't looking for specific targets. They, they blocked these super abundant miRNAs and then went back and they sequenced all of the short RNAs. Um, so that must have been a massive data set, right? Yes, it was. Um, so that's where you use bioinformatics to help you analyze. So basically, those huge data sets go through um, analysis pipeline, and then you identify a few handful of, um, of relevant targets. Think of it as casting a wide net mm -hmm. to just find exactly what you're looking for. So it's like uh, panning for gold. You, exactly. you know there's gold in the river. So you, you dip down, you get all of the sediment, and you shuffle it all out so you can find the nuggets. Um, and, and now that we have our nuggets, how do we test if they're real gold and not fool's gold? So how do we know that? We can actually use digital PCR for validation. Um, so digital PCR allows you to focus mm -hmm. on those specific targets that you've identified using NGS to make sure they are really relevant and significant for, let's say, a specific disease state or uh, a, um, a detection or anything else. So in short, how does it work? Uh, what we use with DPCR is actually a nanoplate. So we're going to uh, split all of the uh, samples we have into uh, thousands of teeny tiny reactions. Each reaction um, is actually called a partition. Uh, with the nanoplates, it's actually a physical partition. And each reaction will be um, analyzed independently. So because you split the samples in thousands of reactions, each reaction should actually have one or zero copy of your target. And so it's going to be a simple, uh, um, simple reading of positive or negative. And then we can use absolute quantification to quantify the number of positive partition out of the, the entire sample. And that makes it absolute and very accurate and sensitive. You said each of the partitions are either positive or negative. That's uh, like a one or a zero. So that's uh, sort of like binary commu computer language, right? Correct. Is that why they call it digital exactly. PCR? Exactly. Yes, okay. that is what, what it's called digital mm -hmm. PCR. So in short, that's exactly why it's so sensitive. Uh, because uh, you're going to get to the bottom of the number of copy, the exact number of copy of your target in the sample. So it's all about turning uh, this broad discovery from NGS into very specific results with DPCR. Exactly. NGS is all about the discovery. DPCR is here to validate and provide accurate and sensitive quantification uh, for the validation of those targets. Okay, good. So now you have both your data sets. How do you integrate them together? So this is actually the final step, um, combining both uh, data sets to identify the biomarkers, uh, signatures um, that uh, will make your test um, accurate and relevant. And this is how you actually combine both to get the perfect biomarker discovery and validation workflow. So what you're saying is that NGS and DPCR are opposites of one another, at, at least for this use. Um, how do their strengths balance one another? So we do say opposite attract, right? Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. So NGS is all about discovery, broadening your targets, and screening through entire data sets. And DPCI is all about zooming in, focusing. It's also faster and really accurate in terms of absolute quantification. So combining both gets you the best um, strength of each workflow with um, a really high chance of discovering the relevant targets and also unmatched sensitivity that you need uh, to detect and quantify. Yeah, that's kind of like my wife and I. She's uh, really focused, and I'm a bit all over the place. You yeah. know, I take everything <laughs> in. But, but we work great together. Um, so what are the other benefits of, of NGS and DPCR together? 
Yeah, so hummingbird diagnostics use that for, let's say, lung, lung cancer detection. But if you think about it, it's a workflow that can also be applied to other biomarkers or analytes. So, for example, in the oncology world, because we were on, on lung cancer with a hummingbird diagnostics, in the oncology world, um, this workflow can also be applied to circulating tumor DNA for the detection and monitoring of a disease. Um, and if you think about it, it's it's not all about oncology. We can also use an NGS and DPCR workflow combined together for, let's say, uh, variant monitoring when you have a, a viral pandemic, for example. So it's really a, um, a workflow that is uh, very flexible and can be adapted to many, many different uh, diseases and pathologies. So uh, we talked about how NGS and DPCR complement each other. Um, so they integrate together you have these really large data sets and then you get into really specific DPCR. Uh, do we have any tools that, that bring this all together? Yeah, the, the amount of data, the analysis interpretation can be quite overwhelming, to be honest. So we, we have tried to develop some tools that can really help researchers uh, during this workflow. Um, so, for example, uh, we have a, um, on the CAGEN.com web website, we have a portal called uh, GeneGlobe, where you can screen uh, through list of microRNAs, um, uh, genes, and also entire pathways. And that actually allows you uh, to find maybe uh, panels, uh, whether it's NGS panels, DPCR assays, uh, qPCR panels or assays as well, that can uh, help you uh, develop your uh, workflow. Um, once you have done that, once you have actually analyzed, uh, constructed, let's say, your libraries, NGS libraries, and you have your data set, you can um, upload them to GeneGlobe because yeah. we do have an analysis pipeline as well. Um, and within that pipeline, in the result, you're going to get maybe sets of microRNA or genes that might be upregulated or downregulated. And gene group can identify those and take you straight away to uh, the assays that will make more sense to uh, be able to validate them through DPCR. So um, that's how it's such a powerful, it's a really streamlined um, uh, analysis and interpretation pipeline as well. You can um, analyze your data and then make custom assays. So are there any other advantages of GeneGlobe for this biomarker discovery workflow? So you mentioned custom. Um, custom could be building your own panels, or it could actually build even an assay. Let's say uh, your microRNA does not um, feature in the list of pre-designed assay. GeneGlob can also run a design algorithm to get you uh, the, the actual primers that will uh, allow you to detect it through uh, DPCR. So it looks like they're telling me we have some questions from the audience. Would you have time to stick around and answer them? Of course. Okay, great. We'll start out with the uh, first one. Why not stick to one technology, either NGS or DPCR? So uh, I'd like the audience to understand that both technology are really complementary uh, to each other. NGS is all about discovery, screening through thousands of targets. But it might not be precise enough when it comes to the absolute quantification of low abundance targets. DPCR, however, is really focused and fast and will give you the precision you need. So by combining both, you actually leverage uh, the best, uh, the strength of both technologies. And that's how you get the best workflow possible. So we're not working in a vacuum. It really is a, a workflow using one um, to harness the strengths of the others. Exactly. Okay. So the next question is, how effective is DPCR for low abundance biomarkers? Yeah, so that's, it was actually designed for this, and that's why it is uh, such sensitive technology. So basically, because we split the sample in the thousands of partitions in the nanoplates that I'm showing here, um, each target will be there as zero or one copy and will be amplified independently of the rest. And um, so each 
um, each copy will be part of a single PCR reaction, let's say. And that's how it's so powerful. The other advantage is that it's really powerful uh, against PCR inhibitors. So um, it makes it such a, such a great absolute quantification technique. Okay, so you can detect at a lower concentration than like qPCR. Exactly. I always hated that when um, you began to see the negative control uh, amplifying <laughs> before your samples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, it's great that they have a solution for that. Yes. So one last question. Um, it's really practical. How much time does this workflow require? Oh, uh, very, very good question, actually. So. If you have developed the NGS and DPCR workflow in your lab, let's say you start with sample collection, stabilization and extraction, that takes a few hours, let's say. You go straight into NGS library prep, sequencing and uh, analysis. That can be actually very quick with the, the, the informatics tools we have now. That take maybe a two to three days in total, then you go through DPCR validation and that adds another few hours. So let's say that the entire uh, from sample to result to final data integration can, um, can actually be done in less than a week. Okay, so that's actually pretty quick. Yes. So I think that's all we have time for. Um, thanks a lot for being here today, Alan. It's been fascinating. Thank you, Nathan. It was uh, great to, to share that with you today. Excellent. And to you all out there, thanks so much for being here. And I hope you'll join us next time where we're going to be getting a little more precise with NGS and discussing targeted sequencing. Until next time, stay curious, y'all. I'm gonna be